All right, well, let's keep it simple. Good afternoon, everybody. When Jerison and, oh, it's, is it still morning? I wasn't sure. Uh, when Jerison invited me to speak today, I have to say that I was delighted. And at the same time, I also was a little intimidated to be speaking as an English communication executive coach on, the, on a program that talks about blockchain and conflict resolution. And, but it's such a pleasure for me to really think about what is the connection between the topic that Jerison provided for me, international cooperation. I absolutely love this as a way to think about communication. And so today what I'd like to share with you is how I made the connection between my area of expertise, which is communication skills, and international cooperation. And I started by thinking about collaboration, which is really another word for cooperation. And we see collaboration in everything we do. We see it in social media. We see it in philanthropy. We see it in businesses. And we see it here at the university today with Brian Jarrett visiting us from California State University and collaborating with USP. It's really amazing. Collaboration is everywhere. And so when I think about conflict resolution and I think about peace, it goes so well with this idea of cooperation. And really, what is at the foundation of arbitration or mediation or conciliation, all these terms that I'm learning, is authentic dialogue. And what is authentic dialogue? It's listening and speaking. Not speaking and listening. It starts by listening. And so this is where I found the connection to the work that I do in communication skills. Which brings me to international cooperation. When we talk about cooperation, of course, on an international level, we need to have a common language. Let's call that English for today. But we also need something much more important. We need to understand culture. We need to understand who we're dealing with. We also need to understand who we are in relation to our own country and to the countries that we're having conversations with. Last week, I was talking with the chief diversity officer at Boeing or Ingelheim, a pharmaceutical company in Connecticut in the United States. And I asked her, what do you make of this title? How do you interpret international cooperation? And she said something very powerful. She said the first thing that needs to happen when people are having international conversations is they need to leave their stripes at the door. They need to leave their rank. They need to leave their authority. They need to leave their titles at the door. And the second thing she said is that we need to have clear goals. And when we can sit down together and establish that we are working on an even playing field, then we can set goals and we can really achieve them. Which brings me to leadership. Today, leaders need essential skills to be good communicators. And last, just a few days ago, I opened up LinkedIn, and I came across the 2018 Leadership Report. And for those of you who, are, who don't know, most corporations have leadership and development programs. And inside of those programs, we're training the leaders of tomorrow how to have the skills that they need to be effective in the jobs that they will do. And the report, the, the first skill that well, first the question was, what are the most important skill sets needed to be a leader? And the, the first one is probably very obvious. It's leadership skills. We need to know what it takes to be a leader. But do you know what was second and what was third? I was happy to find out. The second was communication skills, and the third was collaboration. 
So I was very happy to see that this topic was timely with the LinkedIn report. Which brings me to education. And we talked today about the digital era. And Jerson had asked me to speak a little bit about the new generation of education. Today, everything is happening very fast. And we have requirements when it comes to our learning. So the first thing that I want to ask you or show you is when you want information, where do you go today? You go to a search engine. And you can do it immediately. When you need information, you just need to pick up your cell phone and ask a question, and we get the answer. And in education, this is actually called just-in-time learning. We don't need it before, and we don't need it after. We need it now. And maybe we're going to forget it, but we, we got it just in time, right? The second point regarding to the new generation of education I want to bring up is related to how, how we only want small bits of information because we don't have the time and we don't have the attention span. And this is something called micro-learning. We want, whether it's in a blog, whether it's in a video post, there are a variety of ways in which we can get information in small bits to decide how much commitment we really want to make to this learning. And the next point that I want to make, I think everything online, all of us, when we go searching for something, we want to buy something, the, we want to try it before we buy it, which means we want it free, right? We all want something for free. And Stanford U University in 2012 created something called Massive Open Online Courses. And these massive open online courses made, made world-renowned professors available to tens of thousands of people who could attend a class at the same time. And finally, when it comes to online education, it's so important that we have options. We need to know that we're going to have a seamless experience between our cell phone, our laptop, our tablet, and maybe once in a while we're going to sit in a classroom for two hours and listen to a professor speak. So, Really, we have to thank the millennials for taking us in every area of life from offline to online. And I really want to ask everybody, when you prepare for your conversations, when you are working in conflict resolution and international cooperation, think about your communication. And I want to challenge you to create safe places for dialogue and really meet people on the bridge of rapport and understanding by understanding culture. And finally, I want to leave you with a word about kindness. Last week, I was at the United Nations at the Power of Collaboration Summit. And a 15-year-old girl stood up. She is a a supporter of the UN, and she said the following about kindness. As we think about cooperating in the age of globalization, we need, we need to make little acts of kindness. Because when we have the intention to act with kindness, we create a mountain of kindness that can drive us into a purposeful future. So I want to thank Thank Jerison, thank the university, and thank everybody who made it possible for me to be here today. Thank you so much for having me.